Let me introduce to you at this time, uh, Attorney Shanta Driver. I, I want to first start by thanking Allen Temple Baptist Church, and in particular Dr. Tasco, for making this first independent community tribunal on the death of Oscar Brand possible. In the next months, it is going to be our job, the people in this room, and those that agree with us, but who could not be here tonight, to win justice for Oscar Grant. That is not something that is certain or guaranteed. It's something that we're going to have to work hard to achieve. Over the course of the last 25 years, there have been more than two thousand killings by the police. Of those killings, including killings of people like Sean Bell, shot 41 times the day before his wedding, unarmed, shot so many times that the police that shot him had to reload their weapons and continue to shoot him. People who were killed in that manner had police who were charged. They had witnesses who saw the events. And yet and still, there's not been, with the exception of one case, a single instant of police being charged and convicted with murder over and over again. No matter how good the evidence, no matter how good the witnesses, no matter how egregious the crime, the police have repeatedly been able to get away with murder. Our intention in holding this tribunal today is to make sure that in this case, that in the death of Oscar Grant, the police who shot him, Officer Meserly, who held the gun, and you will see him struggle to get that gun out of his holster, to shoot someone who was unarmed, who was lying face down on the ground, whose arms were behind his back. We want to make sure that Meserly is charged with murder, that he is brought to justice, that he is placed in jail, so that an example is set. So that an example is set in this community that can be a guideline, a guidepost for the rest of the nation about how to organize to achieve justice. I'm from Detroit. The one time that policemen murdered somebody and were put in jail was in Detroit. It was a man named Malice Green. He was beaten to death by two white policemen named Budson and Nevers. We did a campaign in Detroit that included a community tribunal like this. We worked with the family who were offered six million dollars to settle the case before the criminal trial ever began and they refused to accept the settlement and in refusing to accept the settlement they made clear to the people of Detroit and the people across the nation, justice has to be served in more ways than receiving a few dollar bills. Yes, the family deserves money, and they got money in that case. 
and they will in this case. But justice, justice, providing protection for every other young, black or Latino, Asian or poor white youngster who wants to ride bar, who wants to be in the safety and the company of other people on a holiday like New Year's Eve, doesn't want to drive, wants to follow his mother's directive and take the train instead. Every single one of those young people has to know that Meserly doesn't get to walk away with murder, that a badge isn't a license to kill. Winning this case, winning justice in this case, will mean shifting power. Power back to the community. Power to the young people. Power in particular to Oakland's long-standing progressive black community that has stood historically time and time again and said no. We will not be tricked or fooled into accepting injustice. We'll speak the truth and we'll organize for truth to turn into justice. And we will say, as we've said before, if there's no justice, there's no peace. We are hoping that today's tribunal is just the first of many. Because we know this isn't a sprint, this is a marathon. This is going to be months and months and months of organizing. We know the other side is going to be doing their organizing. They're going to be trying to slander Oscar Grant and his friends. They're going to be trying them in the public before the case even begins. They're right now, while we speak, training the officers, in particular Officer Meserly, about how to get up on a witness stand and cry and ask for mercy and say it was a mistake, that he couldn't tell the difference between his service revolver that was in a special holster weighed five pounds more than as a taser, was a different color, and was on a different side of his body from his taser. They're going to be putting together a case which relies on prejudice and fear in order to get Meserly acquitted. They'll be organizing a case in which they say to the jury, jury, put away your common sense. Ignore the facts. Look at the videos from our eyes. They're going to be saying to the jury, people of the jury, you're the community of Oakland and you need protection and the police provide protection. And if you want that protection and you want that wall of safety, then you, the community, have got to accept an occasional excess an occasional mistake, an occasional wrongdoing, because that's the price of getting that wall of protection. And we've got to be arguing that if the law means anything, that it's got to be applied to one and all. And that there can be no protection if there is no law and there is no justice. And if wearing a badge, if wearing a badge means that you get to carry out a lawless act of murder, of cold-blooded murder, and walk away with it, then there's no safety, there's no protection, there's no hope, there's no future for this community. We can win this case, but we're going to have to be prepared, each and every one of us, as this case is continuing, as this case is proceeding, to be prepared to argue with coworkers and relatives, with students in the schools who we are co-students with, 
with people that we hear talking about this case and saying, oh, I'm not too sure what happened. And, oh, you know, I heard some experts say that, oh, this had to be an accident. We're going to need an army of civil rights activists and proselytizers for justice to be out there arguing the truth. With that, we will have taken a huge step forward. Our program tonight is not going to be short, but it will, every moment of it, I promise you, arm you with what you need to have the dedication and the understanding of what happened, of who Oscar was, of why this fight is so important, so that you can leave here a freedom fighter, a part of the new civil rights movement, taking on the mantle and stepping forward and making sure that as was done in the past, that Oscar Grant, like Medgar Evers, Oscar Grant, like Emmett Till, Oscar Grant, like so many others who became the symbol of a new movement and a new era of hope born in the action of a civil rights movement can go forward. not the first young black man shot down in cold blood by a police officer, but we intend to make him the last one that will die without justice taking place. We can't give, we can't give his four-year-old daughter back her father. We can't give his mother back her son. We can't give his friends back their leader, their colleague, their comrade, their brother. We can't do any of that, but we can do this. We can make sure that when generations come, when they hear the name Oscar Grant, they'll say to themselves, justice. They'll say to themselves, that young man's life may have been taken in great tragedy, but it will not have been taken in vain. being able to see who Oscar was. Some of the young men who were with him that night, and I just have to say, it takes an enormous amount of courage to come to something like this for those young men. Because when you see your friend killed, shot down like that, and then left, dragged away, left on a subway platform to die. Nobody even tried to call an ambulance. People telling you to shut, excuse my language, the blank up, rather than calling for an ambulance. When you've been through that experience, it's a trauma. It's something that you experience and re-experience and go through every day. It's something that makes you ask yourself, why was it him? Why not me? Because you love and you miss the person who you were there with. It makes you go through all kinds of changes all the time. Sometimes you're scared to come out of your house. Sometimes you're scared to go to sleep. Sometimes you're scared to wake up. 
after you go through something like that. But the friends and family of Oscar are here, and the program tonight is going to begin with a slideshow and some statements by them on who Oscar was. Then we're going to get into the case. There's a gentleman who's here, Kenneth Carruthers, who I'm going to ask to stand up now. Right there. <laughs> Kenneth is going to begin our portion on the case because you see, before there was Oscar Grant, there was Kenneth Carruthers, who was hogtied and beaten by Meserly at a BART station, and can tell you just who these cops and that cop is. Then we'll go through the case. We'll look through some of the video, and we'll look at some of the evidence, and we'll talk about why it is so very important that we be vigilant and that we be prepared to fight for justice because as we walk through the legal documents and the videos and the testimony and the evidence, it will become clear to everyone in this room that there has already been put in place a conspiracy, a cover-up for injustice and that it's going to be our job not to allow that to go forward. And then we're going to end with an opportunity for some other families to speak and some people who are in the audience, if you want to speak, to speak. So we ask you, give us your attention, give us your patience. I promise you that what you're a part of now will go down in history if we succeed as the beginning of a new era of hope and justice brought forward by a new civil rights movement that will not rest until justice is done. Thank you.